Well, obviously, watching and waiting was bad enough. But being right in the middle of the pen with people dying around you is another. As the crash intensified, there was no escape route for the fans, held in by the perimeter fence, built specially to prevent any pitch invasions. Well, those 10-foot-high fences were introduced in the 1980s at the height of football hooliganism, but on that day, they became a death trap. Our weekend news presenter, Mark Edwardson, was in Pen 4 that day. He survived, and we followed him as, for the first time in two decades, he went back to Leppings Lane and retraced that dreadful day. Here's Mark's story. With the news, it's good afternoon to our man at Hillsborough, Graham Beecroft. Yes, good afternoon. Welcome to Hillsborough. Beautiful panoramic scenery, which, uh, as with the day when the sun shines, is almost unequalled in this country. Well, my heart's in my mouth. I've just seen the stadium and the, the hair on the back of my neck has, has, has stood up. Um, as I say, this, this is the first time I've been back since April the 15th of 1989. And, it, it's not a nice feeling, it really isn't a nice feeling. Um, my heart's actually beating really, really hard at the moment. Um, well, just like everybody else in this part of the ground that afternoon, I found myself coming out into daylight, having been in the tunnel in front of me, were two pens which were already completely full. I physically, at half past two in the afternoon, couldn't get any further into the ground than this. But with the sheer volume of people still arriving behind us, I found myself around about 20 minutes later, much further into the pen, at around about this spot here. We were so tightly packed in and, and the crowd had moved so much that I was actually, had, actually had my back turned almost to the gold mare. And there were two men I'll remember. And the first one is a man whose name I don't know and whose face I wouldn't recognise, but he was up against a crush bar just behind me here. And all I could hear him saying was, give me some space, mate, give me some space. I'm, I'm having a heart attack. I need to be able to breathe. I, I can't breathe, I'm having a heart attack. And all I could do was look over my shoulder, I couldn't even see his face, and just promise him that I could do as, as much as I possibly could to help him, which of course was, was nothing at the time. And the other person I remember is a man whose face was, was about that far away from me for the best part of 20 minutes. He was a youngish man, much the same age as myself at the time, who, when he realised that I was trying to get down underneath the crowd so I could take a breath, of course, because I, I was short of breath at the time, I, I could barely breathe myself. He, uh, well, I won't tell you exactly what he said, but he screamed some obscenities at me, which persuaded me that going down was probably not the best bet because, as he rightly pointed out, if I'd gone down underneath the crowd, I'd never have got back up. We physically couldn't breathe. There was barely enough space to, to, to even move and maybe even gasp at a breath. It was all I could do to just crane my neck and, and actually take in a lungful of air and then exhale it and of course once you've exhaled the space around you gets filled up it's then a struggle to take the next breath eventually the gate was opened and we we did escape one by one onto the pitch uh, when the police had finally realized that there was something absolutely awful going on and i got to about this point right on the edge of the penalty box and at first i went down on my knees and then eventually i i, I lay down on the pitch just gasping for air just looking up at the sky which just like today was nice and blue, but what I was doing was I was breathing, I was taking in air. Because of the events that unfolded here, 96 people lost their lives. 90 odd families lost loved ones. That can never ever be overlooked and I can never forget that. It's a feeling I thought had subsided uh, quite some years ago but I've still got a very deep sense of anger and injustice. It's just a sign of how deep those emotional scars go for people, because in all the years I've known him, Mark has never, ever spoken about that. Yes, and I, I know how difficult it was for him to go back there, because I talked to him today about it, and uh, really gives a real insight into what it was like. Well, also there that day, Bruce 